to another episode. Hopefully, you guys are having a safe Halloween, and a happy Halloween, by the way. Now, today, I'd like to talk about three games that you should own, and you should be playing on this Halloween. And the very first game I have for you today is Monster Madness Battle for Suburbia. Now, I've owned this game twice now, and I regret getting rid of it the first time because I missed out. Oh, but I'm so happy that I picked it up again. There are four different players, or four different characters you can play as, and you can play either solo or up to four people. And there is Zach, who has an axe for a melee weapon. There is Carrie, who gets a saw, acting like a sword. There is Jennifer, who gets dual chef blades. And then there's Andy, which gets my favorite weapon out of the game, a plunger. And then each one of the characters uh, has a special move that they can use. There are uh, 70 different characters, well, different enemies that you can fight. Whether they be like a spider or a clown, which I thought was pretty cool because the clowns literally come down from the sky with one balloon. And then there are... Demons, uh, there's the undead, whether they be just regular zombies or undead uh, policemen. There are even undead pirates. There's even a boss that you can fight that is a granny. Yeah, a granny. I said, I said granny. And she throws cats at you, because why not? It's, it's a granny. <laughs> but uh, there are a bunch of different vehicles you can play with. There is a buggy that gets a... Uh, a turret on the top of it then one area you get to ride in a swan boat yeah I said a swan boat that shoots wait for it rockets and you have to fight undead pirates and it's great you also are able to transform into a bunch of different some of the the monsters like I've only done one and that was um, I was fighting a bunch of undead policemen and I turned into a werewolf which was pretty cool it changes up the the way you fight because your skin button schematics kind of change a little bit instead of just regularly shooting you like for the werewolf you lunge forward and then you of course you have your regular claw attacks <laughs> and then uh, you're able to also build your own weapons in the game by picking up random things like forks batteries uh, screws pipes a bunch of other stuff and then of course you get your like little tokens which are like these little uh, blue currency basically and um, you use that to, to buy ammo to build the weapons after you've acquired enough parts to be able to build them and then uh, you also can uh, buy uh, bombs molotovs all that fun stuff and it's just crazy insane how much fun you can have with this game so and then anything that I haven't talked about you'll see in the the gameplay footage over here to the right that I missed but if you don't own it you should pick it up highly recommend it I'd have to give this game a 7.5 out of 10 <laughs> on to the next spooky game next one on my list today Lollipop Chainsaw, which you can either get for the Xbox 360 or the PlayStation 3, whichever one you have. Now, with this game, you the you start off meeting Juliet. It's her birthday. And, of course, she is a, a zombie hunter. But her boyfriend, Nick, which you'll see in the gameplay footage, uh, doesn't know this. Well, he's waiting for her at school to give her her birthday gift. Well, he ends up getting attacked by a bunch of zombies. At San Romero High School, which is where the first level uh, takes place at. And, of course, he gets bitten, and she ends up having to cut his head off and perform a ritual to save his life. So he is a talking head that she keeps around her hip. And uh, what's cool about this game is that they, uh, you can either attack with your chainsaw, which is your main primary weapon, which she also uses for... More than just that, because she also has a phone on it, so she can talk to people with it, which is pretty cool. There is also pom-poms that you can use, and then cool little finisher moves, if you pull them off right, that you can do. And then there are collectibles, lollipops, that you can pick up that 
are collectibles. You get coins to upgrade your combos. You can also uh, buy special moves. Like one of the special moves is called uh, Nick Roulette. And basically what you do is you get this little uh, like roulette thing that goes up at the top of the screen. Yeah, do the little mini game for that. And then she has this little rainbow string and she whips his head around her. And that's how she attacks the the, the enemies. There's even a uh, level where uh, you get a... It's a one-time thing, but you end up getting into like a, a combine. And you're able to mow down all these uh, undead zombies, which is awesome. And then uh, there's also another meter that you get at the bottom, which you'll see in the gameplay where uh, once you collect enough stars from killing enough enemies, you can um, basically go in... A, it's kind of like a, a rage mode, kind of, but it's... When you hit the zombies, you, instead of having to whack at them a couple times, you hit them once and then they're dead. Which you can also take out little mini bosses that way with it, which is pretty helpful. There's an area where uh, you have to keep a, a dynamite birthday cake that these zombies have created for you safe. And that thing, that special comes in handy because it's a one hit KO. Because if they get too close to the fire, boom, it's, it's game over. And then... Um, your whole family is a big monster hunter type ordeal and whatnot. And her dad, oh, her dad reminds me of all of which is pretty cool. This game is just wacky. And as you're going through these levels, you're able to rescue students, which is pretty cool. And then uh, you also meet up with the, the whole birthday cake thing. Uh, you end up meeting your teacher, which is a pervy Asian who uses... Uh, two chef knives <laughs> it's pretty cool uh, it's great but um, if you don't own this game I, I highly recommend it there's even an achievement where you can uh, look up a skirt which is worth zero points but it's it's just hilarious the, the whole game is funky the bosses are unique each one is different in their own right like the first one uh, he is this guy right here and he's a a punk rocker and basically he uses his uh singing to attack you like when he uh he says something whether it be like shout it'll say shout coming out of his mouth and that's what will attack you and yeah i thought that was pretty unique for for what it was going for so i mean if you don't own the game you should it's definitely worth it and of course xbox 360 games and playstation 3 games they're not expensive or that expensive these days i think you could pick up this game for like maybe 14 15 bucks i know it's less than 20 now but if you don't have it i highly recommend it and i would have to give this one a an 8 out of 10 just because i enjoyed it just for for the quirkiness alone it, it was fun i enjoyed it quite a bit now of course i could not have one of these videos without at least one not at least not one or at least with one survival horror game excuse me and i chose until dawn now, I just recently picked this game up, and I have been having a blast with it. Uh, oh, if you like 80s and 90s uh, horror films, like the cheesy ones, you'll be right at home with this game. Basically, the, the story goes that you start off with 10 teenagers. They all go to this, uh, one of the characters' uh, vacation homes up in the Snowy Mountains, and the only way to get to it is through a... Uh, a gondola, I think that's what they're called, yeah, and the gondola thing that goes on the, the, the wire from one part to the other, I'm pretty sure it's a gondola, but, or a trolley train, something like that, but anyways, that's the only way to get on or off this mountain, to get to this house, well, in the beginning, two of the, the characters end up, one of them gets pranked, and, because they're, they're kind of, uh, they're jerks, <laughs> they really are, they're a bunch of jerks, but, uh, the two of the two sisters run off, and you'll see them in the the gameplay footage down here. They end up dying. Well, one year later, all eight characters come back to the the cabin for an anniversary and to kind of commemorate the the deaths of the two sisters, because nobody knows what happens, whatnot. And of course, you'll end up finding out what happens as you play the story. But every decision that you make in the game matters. Whether it be um, uh, harming, harming the wildlife or simply just taking one of the other characters' phones and looking at them. 
and it it's pretty cool because they call it the butterfly effect so I guess once you do one thing it affects something later on in the in the story and of course every time you play through the game it's something different because you'll make different choices and of course different choices will lead you down different paths which i thought was crazy but there's also a uh he's called the analyst he's kind of like a, a psychiatrist type deal well he will give you a couple of different choices like there's a you'll see also in the gameplay or in the gameplay footage that i presented for you that uh He'll give you like a choice between like a scarecrow or a clown and every time you pick one of these two choices uh it'll change up what you will end up seeing whether you're afraid of like guts or a needle or a knife or a gun and of course i thought it was pretty cool there's a bunch of quick time events that you have to do in the game and of course there's also an aiming system for like when you have to shoot something which i thought was pretty cool and there are also uh, these totems that you can pick up there's a, a death totem, there's a danger totem, and each one shows you a little bit of what could happen or what's to expect it if you manage to uh, pick the right decisions to get to that point, which I thought was pretty cool. And then, of course, once you collect enough of these totems, uh, you get another extra little snippet of video from collecting these things, which I thought was pretty cool. I mean, most of the characters, they're a bunch of jerks that just want to try to get laid. But there is one that I honestly want to try to keep alive, and her name is Sam. She's the one you first start playing as after you do the whole prologue. But uh, you can end up having this game to where you have everyone die, or you can honestly, I mean, I'm not sure if it's, I'm pretty sure it's a little difficult, but you can honestly have every single member live throughout the, the night. Because this all happens overnight. And then, of course, there's a bunch of different... Uh, what do you want to call it uh homages to all your favorite horror films whether it be like freddy uh there's like a couple of the hannibal lecter uh jason all the cool ones well all the fun ones but um basically if you don't own the game i highly recommend it i mean there's even a, a saw segment in this game that you get to basically play saw and choose who lives and who dies which i thought was pretty neat so, if you don't own the game, I highly recommend that you pick it up. Because oh, it's just, it's phenomenal. It really is. The visuals are great. And if you love, you're a fan of survival horror, I highly recommend you pick it up. <clears throat> and on a last note, since it is Halloween, I will be getting Luigi's Mansion 3, which I am excited to start digging into. And, of course, you can't have Halloween without a few ghosts and frights, right? So, if you plan on picking up the game, or if you plan on picking up any of these games, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe. You all have a safe Halloween, and I'll see you next time.